do mundane astrology and the the uh, the Saturn Saturn Jupiter conjunction, the conjunction of the the teacher of restriction, the teacher of expansion coming together can be seen as a fortuitous mating of the the opposites coming together and learning to work together in the mundane world. What they're saying is, oh, it's going to not work well. You know, one's going to dominate the other, and I'm not sure why they think that. Um, also, in some of the literature, they're talking about it being in Capricorn, um, and it only is in Capricorn in the sidereal system, which is the usually done in the east. It's it, usually in India, for example, they only use the sidereal system, whereas here in the west, a lot of astrologers are tropical. Some use the sidereal system. The sidereal is based on the actual planets in the sky, which yeah. to to some people seems like well, obviously that's what you should use, but. The thinking around using the tropical system uh, has a great deal of validity, in my opinion. Um, there's pros and cons for either. Um, but the point being that the people who are saying it's in Capricorn are the siderealists, the eastern world oh, okay. of the east. Whereas in the west, the tropical astrologers, um, it's in Aquarius, yeah. which is more what he's talking about. And that's about. what entering the age of Aquarius is all about. Well, we already started in that. But, you know, it's just another, you know, just another expression of our learning how to deal with ourselves in the world. But the two coming together so closely in the mundane world. So, yes, you want to look at the planets as they impact different countries. That's what you want to do. So China is one country, U.S. is another, Canada is another. They're all going to have this conjunction in Aquarius in a different house in their chart, oh. on their their national chart. Like every country has a chart. So you'd want to look chart. at the where the it chart. falls in the houses, and then if you were going to look at global problems, you'd want to look for trines and squares and stuff between those places. Well, just for that country. Yeah. And then if you want to know how how is that conjunction... In of Saturn and Jupiter in Aquarius in Canada's chart, how does it interact with that conjunction in the U.S., China, England? That's what mundane astrologers focus on, those kinds of global, mm. real-world events. I do personal astrology, individual astrology, so I'm interested in how it interacts on the level of a person's natal and progressed chart and then you'd want to watch it because those are those are the big movers and the shakers they're not the day-to-day -day planets not the sun the moon mars jupiter mars venus those are the day-to-day -day, our little personality getting up going to work interacting with our loved ones and not so loved ones those are the inner planets saturn and jupiter those are the teachers, and they, they do each represent two different styles of teaching, one of restriction, one of expansion. They each have pros and cons. You know, if yeah. you don't have any restriction, you just go hog wild, you're in big trouble. If you have too much expansion, you don't accomplish anything. You know, it's like the uh, Jupiter... You know, could be seen as sort of the too much restriction. You don't accomplish anything yet. Yeah, neither either one. You <clears throat> won't accomplish you. You won't accomplish anything except to learn that too much of either is not a good idea, and and what the individual has to learn, depending on where it is on their chart, and how it interacts. More importantly, with their the track because it's a transit. So that transit it falls on my ascendant. So big impact on my life. For you, personally. For me, all, for me personally. So everyone, you, what you want to know, personally, is where it hits your chart. Where's it hitting is my it chart? The, I can't do that right now. Right. I have to think. Cool. It's down around the uh, fourth house natally. Oh, that's fun. Um, <laughs> that's where my Mars and Mercury But then there's the progress chart. You'd want to look at both. And then you want to see how, how do those planets... What what are the aspect relations? So are they trying, as you were saying, trying for ease, square for challenge, sextile for, um, 
you know, a certain amount of good fortune oppositional so that you're being challenged. Um, so, but the point is, if you don't do it into your personal chart, you don't know how it affects you. And that's what you want to know is, you know, get to an astrologer and find <clears throat> out where those two planets are in Aquarius in your personal natal and progressed charts. That's where the fun's going to be. Globally, there's not a whole lot we can do about it. But people who, who, who do mundane astrology and people like yourself who really enjoy taking a look at what's going on on the world stage, um, then, of course, it's germane for sure. It's going to be very interesting that it's combined in that, in that sign. And then you'll do the Eastern-Western dance of, well, they say it's in Capricorn, we say it's in Aquarius. That's a fun conversation. But in, in the original old astrology, Saturn rules both Aquarius and, Ca and a, Capricorn. a Capricorn. So, so you know, so, yeah. e either or, you know, come see, come saw. <clears throat> it's a, a little bit of the same thing. So the thing is, where is it in your personal chart? The two great teachers, I can see it coming at the, you know, having to do with the birth of Christ because... You know, a great teacher is going to take the middle road. They're going to have to combine for you Saturn and Jupiter. So it's almost like when this uh, conjunction occurred uh, as the star of Bethlehem for Christ's birth, and for, well, and there was actually a lot of Christ born around that time. There was, you know, that era had Apollonius of Tyana and a whole, there was a lot of messiahs running around as we are reminded by Monty Python. But it makes me think that since that was the personal Messiah, beginning of the Messiah age for the age of Pisces, and it was sort of a universal salvation through one man, now it seems like the the teachers or masters that uh, they can be born or take the stage now, it's more of a call, yeah, for, like in an Aquarian way, for everyone to become their own That's masters That's generally and teachers. The, the, the belief that people have around the age of Aquarius is yeah. that we elevate ourselves to be our own teachers. And and that or would else. be that would be Yeah. But not in a small minded way, not in a well, whatever your ego wants you should do. It still has to combine both teachers, which is the spiritual and the material. You yeah. need to have them in balance or you know, the two are gonna basically kind of implode yeah. so you've got to balance materiality and spirituality as the gentleman was saying in his podcast foolish you, fish you, you've got to you've got to come to balance and and the impact on the structures of religion could be very interesting i mean they may they may come up with some pretty big challenges um, but the spiritual movement of people developing their own inner spirituality, their own direct connection, and avoiding a lot of the materiality that comes with religion, because that's what's happened, yeah. is religion became material. Well, even, yeah, even spiritual traditions, like Eastern practices, like Transcendental Meditation, I mean, you spent your whole life involved in Maharishi's movement, well, a lot of your life, the early part of your life, when I was young, and... Um, even he ended up getting all these Rolls Royces, right? You know, like, so he even he fell in. He had 10 Rolls Royces, I believe, when he died. Excuse me. Oh, yeah. All right. I think so. Anyway, but the point that is... That is the so not true. I think, oh, whatever. We'll let the fact checkers check us because they love that. They, we got we to gotta make jobs for fact checkers these days. Otherwise, you know... I, I'm not interested in knocking any particular <clears throat> spiritual No, but I'm looking app. at... Like, you're, you're looking at... And to spiritual talk about teachers have, have succumbed and spiritual traditions outside of mainstream religions have succumbed to materialism as much as mainstream religions have, it seems. And if we're not going to allow sort of a flip-flop to either uh, Saturn or Jupiter in the years to come, we do each have to take ownership of our own selves and not rely on some guru or church to tell us how to live. We have to figure that out and do the work ourselves is what it seems to me this conjunction is kicking off. Because well, this fear on the global stage is that 
human tendencies will push it to one extreme, right or left brain, as he says. And I don't think right or left brain is a thing anymore, but maybe it is. And the reason I personally, just as a fun fact, pay attention to global politics is because in Enochian magic, you're affecting very specific parts of the planet when you want to with very specific angels that have astrological correlations and that's what I'm doing though I don't talk about it much um, the other thing is the reason sidereal astrology or Jyotish astrology is making such a comeback now is because astrological magic has actually come back into vogue so people mm -hmm. are actually using that for and timing for timing and geomancy of course is based on Jyotish astrology now when you say mundane astrology do you specifically mean tropical astrology or do no, you mean mundane astrology not irrespective of sidereally tropical. Mundane is interested in world politics, how the world functions. It's not about the individual. You're doing charts for the countries. You're wor you're concerned about the world, the world stage, not the individual stage. I don't do mundane astrology personally. Many people do. Those are the ones who are talking now about the impact of that conjunction, whether it's sidereal or tropical, on the countries and therefore the individual be impacted because the leaders of the countries, the way that leadership decides to run the country, uh, and although we vote for them, um, there are trends that really seem will come beyond what we many people want. As you see in the states, most people are functioning in sort of a you know, a happy medium of positive and negative in their leadership in their countries, and the states went into a very extreme uh, pattern over the last four years, and there's reasons for it. To know the reasons, you go into their particular chart and then see where this conjunction is in the chart of the United States, although you have to keep in mind that not everyone agrees on the one chart that should rule the United States. There's differences of opinions on uh, when that birth date was. Well, I think so, that the United States should be defined by the birth date of Donald Trump, clearly. <laughs> anyway, I, I'm not a fan of <laughs> knocking uh, any particular path or, no, you're not. Uh, I love that about or you. spiritual belief, and they all go through a curve. And the thing to remember is uh, the teachers are the teachers, but then there's all the people who end up being a part of that structure that necessarily has to get established. You look at Maharishi, in the East, he's a Sagittarian sun sign. In the West, he's a Capricorn sun sign. So in the West, he's become quite structured, and that's what's developed uh, the Capricornian hmm. that's interesting, expression actually. Yeah, yeah. of him. He is who he is. He doesn't change when he comes from India but to the interpretation of North America. But how his talent and how his gift manifests is going to be a little bit different when he comes to, in my opinion, it, that's why he, in the West, it became so structured. Because it here, he's Capricorn. You know, I think and it, it likes a very strict corporate structure structure in yeah. in whatever it's manifesting. We like structure in the West. That's why we have Freemasonry, Rosicrucian orders, Martinist orders, Golden Dawn orders, free, you know. Yeah. And it, it actually shines a light on the fact that when Paramahansa Yogananda went from the West, East through Europe and then came to America, he was surprised by how poorly he was received. And I always suspected, uh, my interpretation of that was always that a lot of that was because of his Eastern methodology of instruction, right? It wasn't, it is less mm -hmm. structured. And so he developed, they developed here the self realization fellowship in California, and they had to have a structure and they had to have a, a more of a clear technique in order to be able to, to be successful. Because in the, in the East, they have the attitude or they have had of revering their teachers and supporting them spontaneously. It's considered uh, a blessing to your life to support to a teacher, but in our life, we like not our merit badges. Chance. Yeah, we like no, our let merit me badges. See, let me see. Let me see what you're offering, and and I'll give you a, a comparable bit of money for that. You know, and then you'll mm. find their followers are the ones who build up the structure, who want the schools, who want the 
all of the structure that makes it look like they've gone material. The teachers have not necessarily done that at all. No. But you'll you'll get some underlings who will come along around them that may or may not take on that. But part of it is there will be no dissemination of the teaching if there isn't a structure. Otherwise, they will end up in in a village somewhere and it'll never go anywhere. You've no. got to come out and you've got to build a structure if you want your message to get out. And if the message is valuable enough to people, it will find its way through the structure and the good will rise to the top and people will get the good according to their own nature and their own charts and how receptive they are to that particular path. So I do think an attitude of non-judgment is really important in looking at any of these spiritual teachers um, and not attaching judgment too easily to what people say has happened because uh, there's a lot of different ways of looking at it. But right now, to look at Saturn and Jupiter, the two great oppositional teachers in the coming together in Aquarius, yes, it's a time of renewal and it's a time of really learning how to be the best of the material and the spiritual on all the different levels and that plays out and it plays out from the most exalted spiritual to the most base material so we've got some fun work cut out for us